So I have been messing around with a lot of endgame builds, trying to see what is the most broken thing that I can come up with and this one is actually something that many of you guys recommended to me and I had no idea just how crazy over the top broken this thing is to the point where you can beat the hardest fight in the game completely solo by just spamming the same button over and over again. Now I know some of you already know what I'm about to say but for those of you that aren't aware of the Lancelot cheese strategy that I'm about to show you, just take a look at the gameplay that you're seeing right now. Yes, your eyes do not deceive you, I'm fighting against Galanza and Magliel and I am getting hit by nothing. So what is the trick here? What is the secret that is trivializing all of this endgame content? And well for that we have to talk about Lancelot, one of my favorite characters in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, in big part because of his twin blade dance attack, which is pretty much just a gap closer that you are able to use to dash all over the place, that also gives him iframes while you're using it. And it actually deals pretty decent damage as you can see. So the idea is, I'm trying to make a build that revolves around solely using the Twin Blade Dance to get as much damage as possible and to always be invulnerable to damage. So with that being said, let's take a look at the setup that I'm running on Lancelot because not only are the sigils important, but the skills you use as well. Now of course for the weapon my recommended option is going to be the Terminus weapon, although the crit rate weapon is going to do just fine, in fact you can go about this with pretty much any weapon in the game, but of course the Terminus weapon is going to have an edge over all the other ones because of its amazing stats, as well as the Catastrophe trait which is by far one of the best ones in the entire game. And for your overmasteries, you really want to have as much normal attack damage cap up and crit rate as possible. Skill damage cap up would also be nice, but of course the odds of getting all three of those things in the same role are going to be extremely low, so if you get something like this, I would say that's perfect. So here are the sigils that I'm currently running on my Lancelot loadout, and the key to our success is going to be some very important sigils. Let's start with Flight Over Fight. This sigil is going to reduce your attack by 50% outright, which seems like a big deal but trust me we'll be able to fix this very easily, however on the other hand, by lowering your attack by 50% you will be making sure that all of your dodges are considered a perfect dodge. And that of course includes the Twin Blade Dance from Lancelot, which is what we are going to be spamming. And in case you don't know, whenever you dodge an attack, you become invulnerable for around 2.5 seconds. But that's not a lot of invulnerability and that is where a couple of other sigils step into the game, those being Nimble Onslaught as well as Dodge Payback. Dark Hero from the future here just wanted to say that I made a little bit of an error here, your base dodge has an invulnerability of 3 seconds and it can only go up to 6 seconds so you cannot stack Nimble Onslaught with Dodge Payback. And so in my build I end up removing Dodge Payback and instead go with the Tyranny 5 sigil that also comes with Cascade to further reduce my skill cooldown and the white dragon's glory that used to have a tyranny now has a critical hit rate sigil. Sorry for the mistake and let's go back to the video. Nimble Onslaught will extend your invincibility after a perfect dodge and as you can see at max level you will gain 3 extra seconds of invincibility so now you would go up to 5 seconds of invulnerability and it also boosts the charge speed of your SBA gauge by 5% each time you do this and you will reduce the cooldown of all of your skills by 5%. And again, this is every time we dodge and that is all we're going to be doing with this build. Now of course I'm also running the two Lancelot signature sigils, those being the White Dragon's Oath, which will boost the damage and the distance covered by Twin Blade Dance, which is all we're going to be doing and it will raise the damage by 50% and increase the movement range by 25%. So we will be able to stay on top of our opponents as much as possible while at the same time dealing a lot more damage and we'll be able to totally negate the reduced attack from flight over fight very easily. Additionally, White Dragon's Glory is going to increase our damage by up to 50% with each successive hit, and the effect is going to reset if we don't hit anything within 2.5 seconds. It's basically the same thing as Combo Booster, although you can max it out a lot quicker. As you can see I have these two sigils with Tyranny and it's for a very simple purpose. Tyranny is going to increase our attack by 50% and not only is this going to be beneficial in making sure that we hit the damage cap, Tyranny actually has a hidden benefit that it makes your SBA actually deal twice as much damage than it is intended. 
I believe this was first discovered by Miyagi, they have made a video talking about this in depth, so I will be sure to give proper credit here. And because we are using Nimble Onslaught and we're going to be dodging a lot, as you'll see I am able to constantly fill up my SBA gauge very very quickly and so making sure that it deals as much damage as possible is going to be very beneficial. Another cool thing that you might not know about White Dragon's Glory and Combo Booster is that they actually affect the damage of your Skybound Art. And if your Skybound Art is an attack that hits multiple times, more often than not you'll be able to fully max out the effect from these two sigils, which means that the final hit of your SBA is going to deal even more damage. And of course, because I'm going to be running around all over the place and dodging everything, being invulnerable for as long as possible, Glass Cannon is going to be the perfect sigil to add to this build as it's going to raise my attack by 30% but more importantly raise my damage cap by 30% as well. The downside of course is that if you get hit you're going to be inflicted with Dizzy but because I will be invulnerable for most of the time you don't have to worry about that downside. And of course I'm also taking War Elemental because it is a 20% damage added on top of everything including damage cap so it is very much worth running on all of your builds. Of course I'm also running 4 different damage cap sigils, these two come with quick cooldown, simply because I want to have my skills available as soon as possible, since I will also be using them to damage my opponents, and very importantly I'm also going to be running mirror image, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. This one comes with Nimble Onslaught, which is how I'm able to reach Nimble Onslaught level 30, and I also have a single supplementary damage sigil. I don't feel the need to add any more, not just because they are extremely rare, but also because Lancelot already has access to supplementary damage by the use of this skill, and because our cooldown reduction is going to be so so high, we're going to be able to constantly activate this, so there really is no need to add even more supplementary damage. And as I said before, we're going to be running Mirror Image, just to have a safety measure, a way to ensure that even if we do get hit in the very short time span while we are doing the Twin Blade Dance and we're not invulnerable, this will ensure that we'll be able to take the hit and not actually die. And then I have a couple of offensive skills, those being Turbulence as well as Southern Cross. I believe these are the two strongest damaging abilities from Lancelot. And Turbulence in particular not only does it have a very high stun power, it is also an ability that lets you dodge out of the way of an attack. So if for whatever reason you don't have a mirror image and you're not confident you're going to be able to dodge something, simply use this and you'll be totally fine. Again, the idea is making sure that we create a build that is essentially god mode, we can simply AFK, look at a second monitor and just spam the triangle button and you will be able to win. Now my final sigil is a crit rate with stamina. I don't like this one very much in particular, mostly because I feel like the stamina is not really going to benefit me much, I believe I already hit the damage cap without it, and so I think that a more reliable sigil is going to be something like this, which is called untouchable, which will extend the range of your ground dodges, so basically you'll be able to dodge even more reliably. So let me go ahead and show you this build in action, let me remove everybody else from the party, and give you a little bit of a showcase against the hardest quest in the game, the Wolf and the Veil. So let's go ahead and showcase this build in action against Galanza and Magliel because there's actually a game plan here. The very first thing you're gonna want to do is pop your mirror image and then you want to try to dodge anything. And now that you have the invincibility buff, you want to make sure that you pop all of your cooldowns and just keep spamming the dodge button as much as possible. And as you can see, you will eventually just dodge anything that comes your way. You want to go ahead and use your cooldowns only when you have the invincibility buff active that you see on the top left corner of the screen with the golden shield. So now that we get the invincibility I go ahead and use all of these skills. We're about to get a link attack here. And notice how we have already dealt 20% of Galanza's HP. Right there we do get hit but thankfully we do have guts. I was careless. So we were able to survive, even though we were stunned because of Glass Cannon. So I'm gonna go ahead, pop the mirror image again, and just try to dodge out of the way of anything. And of course, if you do feel like you might need to dodge out of the way of something real quick, it's going to be even more reliable if you just spam your dodges. But of course, you won't be dealing damage that way, but if you really feel like you have no way of dodging things, go ahead and do that. So the best way to just play with this place I was just to pay attention to the top left corner of the screen see what buffs you have active and in the meantime spam the triangle button according to what you have and I haven't even been using my SBA because I got it so early 
Let's go ahead and pop it here. With this build, I've been able to get over 8 SVAs in this quest alone. I'm gonna go ahead and pop all of my cooldowns here. And now that we're invincible, just keep on dealing damage. We have the mirror image as a safety option. They're gonna go ahead and do their big thing, but that's totally fine. We're gonna be able to just rush at them and still deal a lot of damage. And again, just look at the gap closing power that we have with this build. We have our SBA up again, so let's go ahead and use it. And Galanz is just about to die and I've barely ran into any issues so far. And there we go, we killed Galanza in just 5 minutes with this playstyle. And now Magliel is going to be even faster. And I mean, just look at this. This is absolutely ridiculous. Just look at how crazy this is. I'm just standing in the middle of all of these AoEs. I don't even know what's happening, I'm just spamming the triangle button. And that is the 7th SBA. We're even gonna be able to trigger a link attack here. Yep, we do get link time here. Just because of how many times we've been able to dodge. We're just gonna pop all of our cooldowns here. And then hit her with the SVA. Oh, she goes into Bloodthirst. And there we go. A very clean fight that just ended up going down once because I was not paying any attention to what I was doing. But that just goes to show you how you can beat the hardest content in the entire game by just pressing a single button. Now I did take a bit longer as you can see, Magliel took me around 8 minutes to defeat. But that's mostly because of her shields and she is a bit of a pain in the ass for solo players. So of course if you're doing this with an actual team with AI companions, it's going to be a lot easier. And again, a 12 minute time for the hardest quest in the game when you're just spamming the same button over and over again is definitely not too bad. And when you take into account that we're going to be getting content that is going to be a lot harder than this, with Lucilius coming next patch at level 200, if you just bring a build like this, you're going to be able to farm him very, very easily. I would go as far as to say that this build is game breaking. But that just goes to show you the extent of the customization options that we have available in Granblue Fantasy Reeling. Now if only the developers would remove damage cap from the game. So let me know how you guys feel about this build in the comment section below. It is by far one of the craziest builds I've been able to create in this game. And thank you to everybody that mentioned this. I definitely had a good time making this video. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Dark Hero, and as always, happy hunting.